Well, Iceland is a country which is in northern Atlantic Ocean, part of Europe and country is known for its beautiful locales for renewable energy and also for hosting the oldest parliament in the world. In recent years, India and Iceland have been engaging with each other despite the distance and contrast in population size. With me is the Foreign Minister of Iceland who is currently on an India visit. So welcome to Beyond. My first question is, what is the focus of your India visit? Well, the focus is very clear. We want to strengthen the ties between Iceland and India. And uh, it's obvious that we are very different. You are very big and populated and uh, you're a superpower in every, every way uh, on the international level. We, uh, so we are very small, uh, and, uh, but we share many, many similarities. You mentioned the parliament. We have the oldest parliament. We share the same values when it comes to democratic values. And it's extremely important, especially now. And the relations between Iceland and India has always been good. We have uh, embassies on, on both in, in New Delhi and, and, and Reykjavik, but uh, we need to strengthen it. And there is a lot of opportunities uh, when it comes to uh, all kinds of cooperations. You mentioned the climate, renewable energy. We could uh, mention also uh, fisheries, of course, tourism and uh, cultural ties. So that's the main aim. I think geothermal is something that both the countries are looking forward to because your country um, perhaps uh, practically runs on renewable energy. So how can Iceland share this technology or maybe resources when it comes to ge uh, geothermal energy? Because we know India is not only one of the fastest growing economy, but it needs energy, energy that doesn't impact the climate. Exactly. Uh, we have a long tradition. We have uh, for a very long time, and it was not because of climate, it's because we didn't have that much money, so we couldn't buy coals and fossil fuel. So we used the renew renewable energy in Iceland, both for heating housing and also uh, making electricity. It's carbon free, it's reliable, mm -hmm. and if you go to Iceland, you will not see any pollution when it comes to the, the cities from uh, heating of the houses and, and, and so on. Uh, there's are endless opportunities here in, in India. We have shared this uh, knowledge to other countries. For example, in China, we have the largest geothermal heating uh, system in China, which is built between uh, Iceland and, and Chinese uh, firms. We have it in, in Africa and many other countries. Uh, so uh, India is a place that we can work together on this important field. So how do you see India's policies uh, towards the Nordics and of course Iceland under the present uh, Modi government because we saw the first India Nordic summit earlier this year which was the second uh, such summit first of course you have it uh, had with the US administration under uh, the former US president Barack Obama so how do you see uh, the pre present administration's role in enhancing the ties between India and of course Iceland and uh, uh, wider Nordic region well, we find very positive uh, response from the government of India. That's very important. And you mentioned the uh, cooperation between uh, uh, the Nordic countries and India. We also look at the Arctic. Uh, we uh, did uh, support you for observator status in the Arctic Council. We are leading the Arctic Council now in, from the next spring. And we find it extremely important that a, a large and, and powerful nation like India will uh, cooperate when it comes to uh, Arctic affairs. And uh, the Arctic is totally different from, it's the opposite from the Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. Everything that happens in the Arctic is something that affects everyone. So it's so important to have you on board and uh, we are fortunate to see that you share the same view when it comes to that. Uh, the release by the Ministry of External Affairs after your meeting with India's External Affairs Minister said that uh, it was discussed India's role in the Arctic and how India can play an enhanced role in the Arctic Council. Can you elaborate on India's enhanced role? What would you like India to play uh, its role in the region? Well, we have uh, in the Arctic Council on the board, there are the nations who are, uh, could say, around the Arctic Council or in the Arctic. It's uh, the Nordic countries, it's, it's Russia, Canada, and the US. But uh, the other the large countries around, especially in Asia, are a very important one. We are not going to do it alone when it comes to research and scientific methods. We also need to uh, have an international law when it comes to all this, uh, for example, the transportation mm -hmm. uh, and exploiting uh, natural resources. Mm -hmm. Because what we are seeing now, we are seeing so, when, when it comes to the Arctic, we are seeing the shortening of the distance of uh, the sailing routes mm -hmm. between uh, Asia and Europe 
by 40% when the sailing route is open. Mm -hmm. That's similar as you've seen when uh, you open up the Suez Canal and the Panama Canal. Mm -hmm. And it's very important that the Arctic will be a peaceful area, mm -hmm. a low tension area. Mm -hmm. And uh, the only way to do so is that we work together with every stakeholders, and India is definitely a large stakeholder when it comes to the Arctic. Mm -hmm. uh, so India, of course, has been doing a lot on climate change. Uh, we know the Paris Accord is something that everyone has been speaking about. Uh, how do you see India's role on the issue of climate change? India has its own policy also, which a lot of countries are participating in, the International Solar Alliance. How can Iceland play an important and key role in the International Solar Alliance? Well, we are not going to do anything when it comes to climate without India. Mm -hmm. India is just so large. Mm -hmm. We, of course, are very, um, uh, very, we are very enthusiastic when it comes to uh, the climate change. We have our own agenda in Iceland, which is, uh, I think, that uh, we could say in every part, it's just uh, uh, we are trying to do our best. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will see uh, carbon-free Iceland in 2040. Mm -hmm. Uh, <coughs> or, or uh, carbon uh, neutralized. But uh, the, the thing is that uh, we need the big players, mm -hmm. and India is one of the biggest players. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, this is something that we need to work together on. And as we mentioned earlier, then we have some knowledge to share. And uh, I'm sure that we can have a very fruitful and important cooperation, not, which is not only important for uh, uh, Iceland and, and India, it's uh, important for the whole world. And uh, um, recently we have started a direct flight also from Iceland to India. I mean, this will of course boost the connectivity, but how many Indians go to Iceland every year? Any data, any stats, and how popular Iceland is uh, becoming uh, in the Indian mind space? Well, uh, it's, you have a few thousands, but we expect uh, more. And, uh, the direct flights changes everything. It's not only easier for Icelanders to go to India, and Icelanders are very in, interested when it comes to India, but it also means that uh, you will have uh, uh, connecting to, uh, because Iceland is a hub, we fly more often every day to North America from Iceland than the all Nordic uh, capitals combined in a whole week. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's been a hub for uh, for Europe and, and North America for a very long time. Now we want to connect it to Asia. Mm -hmm. And that's just, uh, the first step is the direct flight between New Delhi and, and Reykjavik. Mm -hmm. And we are import, uh, interested in more trade. We mm -hmm. want to see a free trade deal between EFTA and India. And it's, not for, it's for many reasons. Mm -hmm. Not on, only for economic reasons, mm -hmm. because trade is much more than just sharing money mm -hmm. for services and goods. Uh, trade is that people understand each other, they work together, they understand different culture, mm -hmm. and uh, so that's, it's also, also a way just to make uh, the world a more peaceful place. Mm -hmm. And I believe Bollywood has helped uh, a lot, it has played an important role. We know that Gerwa mu uh, song, which was of course uh, in the movie Dilwale, was shot there. And recently we also interviewed your Prime Minister who also mentioned this, that how Ger uh, Gerwa song has helped promote tourism. So can you just uh, elaborate on the Bollywood's role and would you like more Bollywood movies to be shot there in your country? Definitely. Well, this is a very beautiful uh, video and uh, well recognized. Of course, we do not know how famous those uh, singers and actors are. We realized when they came to Iceland because people who knew them, the uh, Indian tourists, were, for example, were really interested. Mm -hmm. But what we see is a beautiful uh, uh, video. And uh, we uh, know that from the Icelandic uh, film industry, they are very interested in working with the Indian film industry. It's been very successful so far. Mm -hmm and we see a lot of opportunities. And uh, just to mention that the things you see in the video is not far away from each other. Mm -hmm. And that's a good thing for Iceland as a tourist place. Everything is really short mm -hmm. and uh, easy to go between places. Yeah, definitely, I, I'm trying to remember <laughs> which one, but uh, no, but uh, uh, I don't know which one is a Bollywood or who is a Hollywood, but uh, okay. I've seen a few uh, films from uh, India, and that's one of the things that you, you uh, get interested in another country, for example, you realize it through movies, and you get interest through movies, uh -huh. and it's, uh, that's one of the reasons we, we are, for example, emphasize on uh, the filming industry in Iceland, and it's very easy, for, for example, for Indian filmmakers to go, uh, it's a very favorable uh, both location and also environment for to do, do, do so economically and we, because we want to uh, show Iceland, Iceland to the world. Mm -hmm.
and yoga is also popular in Iceland because uh, you are not only the uh, one of the few countries that supported uh, India's resolution at the United Nations, but yoga is popular in a lot of people. I believe do yoga in your country. Excuse me. Yoga. Yeah. Yoga is quite popular. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, it's not only yoga. Indian cuisine is extremely uh, popular in Iceland. And I don't know where the percentage, but I would think though that uh, when you uh, look at Iceland and Icelandic uh, food, mm -hmm. that India is uh, much larger than you see in, in uh, similar countries mm -hmm. around, especially Europe. And it's been that for, for a long, very long time. And uh, I'm told, of course, I am uh, my favorite restaurant in Iceland is actually an Indian restaurant. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, I'm told that the uh, Indian sp uh, spices and the Icelandic lamb is made for each other. Mm -hmm. And actually, that's my experience. Uh -huh. That's nice to know, sir. But let's talk a little bit uh, geopolitics. Uh, uh, India has been calling for reforms in multilateral structures like United Nations. So what's your view about India's stance on a, a reformed UNSC where India can also be a member? Well, I, I, we are totally agree when it comes to uh, the UN reform. Mm -hmm. And it's good that the Secretary General emphasizes on, on that. Mm -hmm. And we also uh, have supported India to the Security Council. Mm -hmm. And actually, I think it w we also find it important that they will have a, a regular role there, uh, be, uh, uh, would need to uh, uh, run there for, for, for a seat uh, each, each time. Mm -hmm. for, for us, it's obvious reasons, but uh, we are not very optimistic that we will see those changes in the near future. Mm -hmm. So in short, and then I come back to uh, the first part. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the values, uh, then we, and Iceland and India, do agree. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason we have uh, both supported the UN reform mm -hmm. and we also support uh, India to, uh, for the Security Council. Mm -hmm. But you said you're not optimistic. Is it because there are certain countries who are stopping the reforms or it's because of bureaucracy in general? Well, I think that uh, there's someone who is dragging uh, the reforms. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, we would like to see UN as a much more efficient mm -hmm. institution. Mm -hmm. And for example, the Security Council shouldn't be uh, like that. It could block all kinds of things that shouldn't be blocking. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and uh, we all know that uh, there are some uh, nations that uh, do not agree with us. Mm -hmm. Okay, sir. Um, let's move on back to on uh, Arctic Council. Uh, mm -hmm. India is an observer country of Ar for the Arctic Council. China is also an observer country for, uh, for the Arctic Council. China plans to have a polar silk road in uh, the Arctic uh, region. Uh, are you supportive of this idea? What do you think about this idea of having a polar silk uh, road, a Chinese-led uh, infrastructure project in that part of the world, given the fact that its own uh, uh, connectivity projects in in Asia have been facing uh, problems because of the debt crisis? Well, I, I'm, in general, it's good to have an infrastructure uh, building uh, and, and infra, infra, that we are building infrastructures around, around the world. So we are just following this initiative and we work together on the Chinese on, on, on many, many levels, for example, in scientific and, and research. But it's very important also that all the uh, Multilateralism is based on uh, the values we have uh, built it up so far. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what we are very supportive on that uh, and find it uh, essential that we see, see multilateralism, which we, st we uh, strongly believe in, we strongly support, is based on, on values like uh, rule of law, mm -hmm. <coughs> human rights and uh, demo democratic uh, values. China says it's a near Arctic country. Mm -hmm. Will you say so that, since you are an Arctic country, will you say that China, being in Asia, has rights there in Arctic, despite having no territorial sovereignty in that part of the world? Well, I think it's just important that we work together on, this, as, uh, on multilateralism when it comes to uh, the Arctic. Mm -hmm. I think that, uh, of course, when we look at the Arctic, we need to look at the people in the Arctic. Mm -hmm. There are four million people in the Arctic, mm -hmm. and those are the ones who really, I mean, we are not going to make any decisions with, without them. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need also uh, to, uh, when it comes to uh, both uh, transportation, which is quite a lot now, mm -hmm. uh, and also when it comes to uh, exploiting natural resources, which will be possible in, in the near future, mm -hmm. then we need to have some kind of structure. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned, it's very important. That's the reason we have uh, supported uh, observative status, both from China and India and others, because everyone needs to be at the table when we are discussing those, those things. Mm. Otherwise, we will not su succeed. The main thing is that the Arctic will stay on 
as a peaceful area mm -hmm. and low tension area. That's the, the main aim. That's the thing that we want to see. Low tension area, but there's some another worry. The big worry is the climate change. Recently, we saw that report, the Arctic report, Arctic climate report, which says that Arctic is in dire state. The ice has almost uh, uh, disappeared in the region. How worried you are being an Arctic country well, after I that mean, report? Well, I mean, the challenge challenge is there. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but I'm an optimist. I think that uh, it, it's just a thing that we need to address. Mm -hmm. And we need to do it together. Mm -hmm. Iceland can, cannot do it alone. Even India cannot do it alone. So this is uh, just a part that we need to work together on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I see a lot of positive signs. There's a lot of enthusiasm all around the world when it comes to fight against climate change. Mm -hmm. So now it's for us to deliver. Positivity, but we have seen a major country withdrawing from the Paris Climate Accord. Yeah, but you know, yeah, but at the same time, you see also where uh, uh, both uh, states in the U.S. and you see also where uh, huge firms and cities and others who are more enthusiastic mm -hmm. than ever when it comes to uh, fighting climate change. Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, so it, it's it's not all bleak when when it comes to that. So, but. Uh, of course, it needs to be discussed and we need to listen to the voices that are concerned mm -hmm. that it's not done in the right way and so on. We, 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 we cannot ignore that mm -hmm. uh, because, uh, because I think that if we do it in an open and transparent way, then it's much uh, based on scientific uh, knowledge then I think that will get the best results. So Iceland is a European country and Europe is not going through a very positive phase. Where do you see Europe in the next few years, given the fact that there are so many squabbles happening and it seems that the union is going towards uh, maybe a disastrous uh, end? Well, uh, I think that um, it's, Europe is not about the institutions. Uh, there are obvi obviously challenges there, which uh, they need to, uh, to, to sort out. Of course, uh, European nations are working very closely together. There are layers of cooperation in, in Europe. People sometimes only look at the EU. It's not only the EU. Mm -hmm. It's uh, EU, it's the EFTA, it's, it's NATO, it's the EEA, it's the Eurozone, uh, Schengen, and all kinds of cooperation. We have layers of cooperation. Mm -hmm. And I think it's uh, the best way for us just to uh, approach it like that, mm -hmm. uh, in an a la carte way. If we do that, uh, then I think that we will lower the tension in the nation states and uh, with, the, with the people in the public. But of course, it's not me who is going to make that, those decisions. We are staying outside the EU and we are not on the way in. Mm. Iceland is outside the European Union. Are there any advantages of being outside the European Union, given the fact when you look from that place where you are, you see everyone is going crazy over certain stuff, over Brexit and all those issues? Yeah, well, we are very fortunate that we, need, we don't need to... Uh, you know, these are challenges that I hope they will resolve. It's very important to resolve. Mm -hmm. And even though we are not a part of the EU, these are our friends and allies, and we wish them all the best so they can try to find some, some solutions. Mm -hmm. But I think that uh, it's clear advantage not to be a part of the EU. Mm -hmm. We have access to the European market, which is, of course, very important to us. But we need also free trade all around the world. We are just a perfect example of the importance of free trade. Mm -hmm. We used to be very poor. We would still be poor if we would have access to other markets. And our markets wouldn't be open. Mm -hmm. Because that's something that's very important too. Mm -hmm. And that's the message we are giving. Because uh, for every, every uh, once in a while, these ideas about protectionism comes up. Mm -hmm. It's always a bad idea. Mm -hmm. It's a ba been a bad idea for hundreds of years. So uh, uh, we are just... Uh, emphasize on the importance of free trade. Mm -hmm. And it's not in, it's only inside Europe, it's between European nations and the rest of the world and uh, for reasons that, that which are obvious. You just mentioned free trade agreement. Would you like to sign a free trade agreement with India? Because you don't have, a, but you have a free trade agreement with China. Definitely. And uh, that's uh, the thing that I am emphasizing on. And our policy is to have a free trade deal between EFTA and India. And it's very important for both parties. Mm -hmm. And one could say that India is so big that you don't need it. Well, you will only benefit from it. Mm -hmm. You will never lose from having a free trade deal with, with EFTA. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, that's, and it will help us in so many ways. We have discussing things that little Iceland and uh, big India can work together on. If we have a free trade deal, it will only th make things easier. Mm -hmm. So coming back to the European question, what suggestion would you like to give to 
Prime Minister of Britain, Prime Minister Theresa May, at this current uh, stage, because we all know what Britain is going through, the Brexit wars. So what suggestion would you like to give? And would you suggest that Britain should join EFTA? Because that, of course, uh, will be advantageous for the country because it, jo it gets all the perks of a free trade agreement without joining the European Union. From the start, Brexit has been a priority for us. Uh, UK is our second uh, most important trading partner. It's the fifth largest economy in the world. Mm -hmm. And what we are just saying, do not put any trade restriction in Europe mm -hmm. and think it in a constructive way. Mm -hmm. And if we can be a part of the solution in some way, for example, if the UK would like to uh, join EFTA mm -hmm. or EEA, uh, we should look into that in a very positive way. Mm -hmm. That's been our, our point from the start and it's still the point. Mm -hmm. It would be awful if we would see in the near future some trade restrictions in Europe. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are so much bigger things that we need to look at in, in the, uh, could say, in the, in the bigger picture. Uh, so it's just that uh, I think <laughs> try to uh, work things in a constructive way mm -hmm. and look long term. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, this has been our policy from the, the beginning. We should think about uh, the people in Europe, not the institution. Mm -hmm. If there is something that we can do to help then we are ready to look into it in a very positive way. Mm -hmm. So last few questions. You're also a member of NATO. You don't have a standing army, though. Um, US President Donald Trump has been saying that there needs to be budget cut for NATO. What is your response as being a member of a NATO country and as a foreign minister of a NATO country? Well, NATO is an extremely important uh, organization. And uh, it's, a, it's a cornerstone in our uh, foreign policy. So we are a strong supporter of, of NATO and it needs to be uh, strengthened and uh, we are seeing that. We are seeing in the, in the, from the, since 2014 then we are seeing that uh, it's increase in, in the defence budget for I think more or less every, every country. So it's going in, in the right direction and uh, we need to have a strong defence. Uh, we need to, uh, for reasons that we, we all know, uh, it would be a better if the world would be <laughs> differently, but uh, the world is as it is. So my last question, uh, there are other countries also which are not part of NATO, but are considered major allies like Pakistan, like Turkey. Uh, when it comes to Pakistan, there are voices in Washington that Pakistan should be removed as a major ally of NATO. As the foreign minister of one of the NATO countries, what is your response? Should Pakistan be removed as a major ally because of its support to terrorism? We need to uh, fight terrorism every way. Actually, uh, Turkey is a member of, uh, of NATO. And when you look at the closest countries towards NATO, we are more uh, the ones who are working uh, closest is Sweden and, and, uh, and, and Finland. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, we need to, uh, and uh, NATO has more or less emphasized on Europe, 360 degree, mm -hmm. but uh, also is emphasizing more on fight against terrorism, mm -hmm. which is, uh, and uh, cyber uh, attacks and, and things like that, which is a very important field. And we, we uh, cannot, uh, <laughs> We cannot forget that uh, we need to fight terrorism every way we can. And uh, that's, uh, that's the message we give. Well, thank you so much for that extensive interview on various topics, whether it's India, Iceland ties, whether your suggestions uh, to Europe or whether it's fighting terror. Well, thank you so much. And of course, uh, we hope uh, India and uh, Iceland sign that free trade uh, deal very soon. That will be beneficial for both the countries who are, despite their distances, coming closer for, of course, betterment of both India and Iceland. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you.